Congruent triangles. Our objectives are to use properties of congruent triangles as well as prove triangles congruent by using the definition of congruence. Who uses this? Machinists use triangles to construct a model of the International Space Station's support structure. Corresponding angles and corresponding sides are in the same position in polygons with an equal number of sides. Congruent polygons are two polygons are congruent if and only if their corresponding angles and corresponding sides are congruent. For example, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because all three angles are congruent to each other. So like angle A and angle D are congruent angle B and E, C and F, and the corresponding sides are all congruent. The same with a polygon, so polygon PQRS is congruent to polygon WXYZ. Corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are congruent. Therefore, the two polygons are congruent. Let's name congruent corresponding parts. So, if polygon LMNP is congruent to polygon EFGH, identify all pairs of corresponding congruent parts. Notice where L and E are in the same place, they are the corresponding angles. So, since I gave that one to you, we'll go here. So, we've got angle L is congruent to angle E. So, let's name the rest of them. So, angle M is in the same position as angle F, so they are congruent. Then we have angle N is in the same place as angle G, so angle N is congruent to angle G. And likewise, angle P is congruent to angle H. Now notice, these are congruent to each other because the polygons are congruent. Let's look at corresponding sides. So your first two will go together. So LM is going to be congruent to EF. MN is going to be congruent to FG. N P is going to be congruent to GH, and our fourth side will be PL is going to be congruent to HE. Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure your letters do line up. So for example, if I did PL here, I needed to do HE. I couldn't do EH because E corresponds with L, not P. Let's try using corresponding parts of congruent, or corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So we have find the value of x. Well, we know that triangle EFH is congruent to triangle GFH. So we know that these two angles are congruent. We know that these two angles are congruent because E and G go together and our two angle Fs will go together. And then we know that both of our H's are the same. So if this one is 90, so is this one. Now we know enough information to be able to solve for X. So we have 6X minus 12 equals 90 degrees. So now we can add 12 to both sides and we end up with 102. And then we can divide by 6 on both sides, leaving us with x equals 7. Now let's find the measure of angle GFH. So it's GFH. We're looking for this one right here. Let's color it in so you can see it a little bit better there. All right. Well, we know that this angle here will be congruent to this one. We also know that angle E is congruent to angle G. So we can label this one as 21.6. Well, if we have 90 degrees, 
we can state that the other two angles must be equal to 90. So we have 90 minus 21.6. And when we do that, we end up with 68.4 degrees. Let's try looking at a proof. We're going to prove triangles are congruent. So to state that two triangles or any figure are, is congruent, all three sides and all three angles have to be congruent to be able to do this. So we are going to need enough steps to show that all three of these angles, our corresponding angles, will be congruent to each other and all three of our corresponding sides will be congruent to each other. So they started us out with the fact that angle M and angle P are right angles. They gave that to us. Well, based on the right angle congruence theorem, we can then state that angle P and angle M are congruent. Well, there is one angle. So that's one angle. All right, the vertical angles theorem. So now we can state that angle QRP is congruent to NRM. Because vertical angles are in fact congruent. So now we have this angle and this angle are congruent. So there's our second set of corresponding angles. And now that we have one set of angles and two sets of angles, we can use what to state that the third set of angles are congruent? Well, the third angles theorem. And that would be our third set of angles. All right, so now we have R is the midpoint of PM. So if R is the midpoint of PM, we know that because they gave it to us. But we can use the definition of midpoint to state that PR and MR must in fact be congruent. And now we can use our last set of givens. So we have PQ is congruent to MN and QR is congruent to NR. And with that, that gives us two sides here. So we have three sets of angles and three sets of sides. So therefore our triangles are congruent. So we've hit our last step and because all of our corresponding angles and all of our corresponding sides are congruent, we're using the definition of congruent triangles to state that the two triangles are congruent. And that concludes our lesson on congruent triangles.